Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a little makeup look, this makeup look and Q&A with you guys. So stay tuned if you wanna see how I got this look. Side note, it's very hard for me to do a Q&A, like talk and do makeup. So <laughs> I will link everything I've used in the info box below. So if there's anything that I haven't mentioned, it will be down there. I hope you all enjoy seeing how I achieve this little golden dewy glowy look. So yeah, let's rewind to me without any makeup on. Hello people. So that was a really weird intro. Wow. Today I thought I would do some makeup with you and also answer my phone. No, not answer my phone. My phone is just driving me mad. And I also thought I would answer some questions from you guys on Instagram whilst doing my makeup. Today I think we're gonna go for maybe like a goldy eye look. Basically I don't know and I didn't really plan this and I haven't really thought it through that much so we're gonna see how this works out. I was kind of like oh do I go for pink so I have ransacked my makeup stash, literally gone through like a hundred moving boxes to bring out some pinks, but I'm not sure. So we are going to find out together what this makeup look ends up like, because I really don't know. I'm gonna start off by applying some primer and then I'll get onto some questions. I'm using the Fenty Beauty, I think this is the hydrating primer. Yeah, Soft Silk Pro Filter. I've got loads of product in my hands, I really didn't think this through. This is the hydrating primer. I really like it. It looks so good on my skin. I'm gonna bring you in actually. I feel like a lot of you guys really like seeing my skin close up. As uncomfortable as it makes me because then I have to see, I can see my skin. It makes me so sad. But I know you guys like it, so here we are. Right, I'm gonna be using the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. This is in the shade 240. And I bought this off Harvey Nichols a couple of weeks back and completely guessed my shade and I feel like I may have nailed it, so really happy. Damn it! I've got to work my beauty blender. I will be right back. Played a very dangerous game there of uh, not getting foundation on anything. And I'm really so happy about the fact that I'm wearing a white shirt when I'm playing that game. Yeah, I'm loving this foundation at the moment. It is so glowy. It has good coverage as well. It's really, really beautiful. It makes me feel so happy with my skin, even though it's not perfect by any means. So someone has asked what has been the most positive thing about lockdown for me. I would actually say it's the slower pace of life, which I know not everyone has had. I know not everyone likes. I feel very grateful to have had a slower pace because not everyone has had that option. Lots of people have had to obviously work over time. And with being self-employed, I feel like you just work and work and work and work for as long as there is work, because obviously you don't know when work will dry up so things have definitely well for a period of time were quieter and i really enjoyed being able to take a step back because it's not something that i normally am able to do and if i do i feel very very guilty i've definitely like had months off in the past but there's still lots of like events and trips and things that would be good to go to and to be honest i really enjoyed not having to do those things. I love my job, I love my work, and I actually love being able to be at home and just plow through my work. Normally I would have days where I would go to London and I'd have meetings, and it's actually been nice to have a break from that and have a slower, not even a slower pace, I feel like I'm actually more productive because I obviously have to commute to London and it's quite a long commute, not the longest, but it takes a whole day really of my time. And it's been really nice to get those days back. There's been no travel. So I've actually quite enjoyed just being able to be home and especially being able to just like be at home and like actually spending time in the house. I don't think that is something that I would have had the chance to do had COVID not happened. So yeah, it's been nice to have the summer at home just being able to be with my house and be with ryan as well because we i think i've talked about this maybe on instagram but normally his busy periods are the summer whereas my busy periods are like autumn through march but then i also have like my travel period is over the spring summer so really we wouldn't have spent a lot of time together this year so i'm just feeling very grateful that we've been able to do that really this is my Fenty, oh, by the I feel like I've just remembered that I haven't said what I've been using. I use the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer in the shade 270. It's actually a pinkier tone and I did that on purpose because even though it's a bit too pinky for my skin, it works perfectly underneath my eyes to conceal any dark circles and I'm really loving that. Oh, and then I use the Kevin Aquam Foundation Balm in Medium FB 06. And I always get asked the shade name for that. That is it, it's a little bit too light for my skin at the moment, but winter is perfect. And I'm gonna be using the Fenty Cream Bronzer in the shade 05 Teddy. I'm using a Spectrum 
brush. But yeah, so that was me doing two products and getting through one question in the space of two products. What is one thing you miss about your old place or nothing at all? When I look at pictures of it, like the living room on my home account, I get this real like nostalgic feeling because I remember that view every time I came home from a trip and there'd just be this moment where I'd be like, ah, <sighs> because you're home. And I remember that feeling and that's what the feeling I get when I look at pictures of the kind of entryway into the living room with the old flat but yeah don't miss that much about it mostly because i love where i am now i actually even though i had a couple of friends in brighton i actually feel like i'm surrounded by my friends more now and i don't know it's actually been more social since moving out of the center of brighton which i assume most people probably wouldn't think that but yeah, it's been great. Yeah, I'm not really missing too much apart from maybe like the takeaway options are a little bit more varied, but to be honest, that's not a bad thing to not be around them anymore, if I'm very, very honest. Like, it's definitely done me some good. I still love my takeaways, but there's just less choice. It's the early days, so it might be that there's actually more things that I'll miss as time goes on. I just don't know what they are right now. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of blush. This is the Bobbi Brown Pot Rouge in Powder Pink. And this brush is a Fenty brush. I love this. I really rate the Fenty brushes. This one's nice and angled, and I feel like it's just the perfect size for my cheeks. I'm not gonna go too, she says, I'm not gonna go too heavy with the blush today. I wanna still keep that like sun-kissed look, but I don't want it to be too pinky, because like I said, I think I'm gonna try and go for this gold look. And though it was really tempting to go like heavy, pinky tones yeah i wanted to do something a little bit different because i've been going not super pinky lately but quite pinky so i just wanted to do something a little bit different today i usually shy away from makeup tutorials if i'm honest now because i just don't feel like i'm the most skilled but i actually still really enjoy makeup i feel like it's just not something that i enjoy so much on camera like you don't see me like talking about makeup so much and it's just one of those things that i kind of like enjoy in my personal time i keep forgetting to show you the products though so um, this is why i'm terrible at makeup tutorials i'm using a bit of this iconic london sheer blush in rose riot it's very very light i'm just going to use it on the same brush just to give myself like a little bit more of a dewiness more than anything because it's got like this very sheer pinky tint to it but on my skin tone doesn't really show up there's another sheer blush that i have from them which is more of a pink which i could have used today if i'd have gone for the pink look so let me know if you want to see the pink look basically is what i'm saying whilst i'm at it i'm gonna add some highlighter these are the iconic london drops in the shade glow if you guys have watched my videos lately you will have seen i've been using them a fair bit they sent me some bits and i've been really enjoying using them this one i haven't used yet before it's a very like goldy bronzy tone so i'm just kind of blending that in to the pink on my cheeks. I'm blending it quite widely as well, just so I get that really nice glow across my cheekbones and temples. I feel like I need a powder highlight really for this bit. I think I would have way more control over the amount going onto my skin. So I'm gonna raid my stash for something like that over the next few days. Now, one of the most asked questions is one that I feel like I hate talking about because I feel like it's a broken record because I think I've been asked it a lot on Instagram and those of you who follow me on there will have seen but I have to remember not everyone sees everything. So one of my most asked questions is how did you and Ryan meet and also how long have we been together? We've been together for over a year now which is why when people who are also asking me about babies need to sit down because but yeah, we've been together for over a year, but it was slightly different really in the sense of we've known each other for a really, really, really long time. I actually asked Ryan out when I was 14 and he said no. But I feel like it has just illustrated that I always get what I want eventually. So yeah, we've known each other for a really long time, um, which kind of made it, I want to say easier in some ways, but it's not like, you know, where you already know someone really well. But yeah, we actually swiped on each other on Tinder and I didn't realise that it was him. And then he followed me on Instagram and I was scrolling through his Instagram and saw like a 10 year challenge and I was like, oh my god. I think to this day I still have a voice note on my phone to Lauren of me going, ah, so this is really awkward because i'm just that kind of person but yeah so we just kind of like got chatting through that and then it was quite a while before we actually went like out on a date but yeah needless to say it was successful i always get really awkward when i'm talking about ryan i don't know why i feel like i'm still not 100 percent like super comfortable with like talking about personal stuff on camera again i really feel like 2018 made me really want to like not share so much but i always feel really good when i do share there's this weird like internal conflict if i love sharing and i love being open and honest i also really really struggle with certain topics oh, for anyone that's wondering what the heck i'm doing 
doing with my makeup now. I'm using my Too Faced Natural Lust palette, which I love. I bought in Sephora when I went to Disneyland Paris. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much like one of the only palettes that I've used for such a long time now that I'm so sorry if you guys are bored of it, but it just goes to show when I like something, I really like something. I'm just putting a bit of this Natasha Denona bronzer under my eye as well. Just gonna smoke it out a little bit. This is literally the most makeup I've worn in such a long time. I'm not used to doing such a like, kind of heavy eye look. But yeah, basically the long and short of it is that's how Ryan and I met. We have a lot of like people in common. So it just kind of like worked really, really nicely. I'm gonna take a little bit of the gold out of this uh, Huda Beauty palette because I really like it. And it's like a rosy gold. So I have this shade all over and then some of this bronzy shade here on the outer corner. And then I put a little bit of this brown shade here through the top of my crease. And then I also put a little bit of this kind of here as you just saw, but you could take that or leave that if you wanna like really simplify this eye look. Now that you're in your 20s, how do you feel about turning 30 and the pressure around it? Honestly, I don't give it a lot of thought other than when Lauren and I discuss because we love a birthday. Other than discussing birthdays, I don't give it a lot of thought at all. I don't feel like I'm surrounded by people that put me under a lot of pressure ever. My mum and dad are very relaxed. They don't put any pressure on me. And none of my friends really care. Like we don't, we're not, none of us are super like traditional really. Maybe a couple, but like the majority of us just don't really think about it. Like I very rarely think about my age if I'm honest. So I know that's probably a really unhelpful answer you know i think it would be different if maybe i was surrounded by people that were like oh you're 30 you need to like get your shiz together i don't know maybe some people think that about me but they're definitely not saying it to my face but yeah i think that's a, such an important thing is i barely ever really think about my age but i also think maybe like it's because i've had my complete quarter life crisis at 28 and obviously i think a lot of people like i talk to so many people i know have broken up with partners around the kind of age of like 26 27 28 how old was i i think i was 26 and like being in that point of like your mid 20s where you thought you had your life mapped out and then realizing that that is not necessarily what you want or that relationship isn't what you want and therefore what you thought you wanted you don't want i feel like that definitely changes how you look at 30 once you've like moved past that i feel like i've had my freak out it was just early if anything i'm actually excited but I, like i said i don't know if that's because i'm planning like this great birthday party mine and lauren's birthdays are like a month apart from each other so it's just gonna be a very expensive but very great year. Do you feel fear over putting out your content online? And if so, how do you manage it? I have a hernia when certain videos go out. Like Monday's video was talking about my weight loss. As soon as the video is going live, I'm like, <sighs> by the way, I just did a little bit of liner using the black from the Natural Lust palette as well. I'm gonna move on to my brows. I'm not you. wow, I literally almost went to use the same brush that I used for my eyeliner. <laughs> that would have been awful okay correct brush i'm using the anastasia beverly hills dip brow pomade but yeah there are certain videos where i talk about something that is more personal and that i'm more open and honest about and those ones i just have a complete i don't know my my stomach churns there's that whole cliche of feeling the fear and doing it anyway i guess that's what i literally do like twice a week every week the one thing i always ask myself when i'm scared of doing things though is like what is the alternative what are you going to do if you don't do it and if there isn't an alternative or i'm not happy with the alternative then that's when i'm like well i just need to bite the bullet and get on with this really don't i i think it's easier when it's work like i'm very matter of fact the majority of aspects of it i wish i was that way with everything in my life my therapist once said to me she was like if you treated your life the way you treat your work you would find everything so much easier <laughs> so that's what i try and do now does anyone else do their makeup and just constantly like is that okay? Next, I'm gonna be using mascara. I've got an old Bare Minerals Lash Topia and a fresh Bare Minerals Lash Topia. I use the old brush to separate out my lashes and then I go in with a little bit of the newer one and it kind of helps the newer one get rid of that excess product slowly because I hate like fresh mascaras. I always find they're too much. It always takes me about a million years to do my mascara. So I felt like this is the perfect time to answer the next question, which is primarily like the first part of the question is how has Corona affected your work? I've also been asked to talk a bit more about my team, but I don't really know uh, what to say specifically. But yeah, in terms of Corona, it's been a very strange time. I think I'm very grateful that one of the things that you learn very quickly to do in this industry is you adapt quickly. It's a really important like characteristic or quality that I would say most YouTubers or influencers or whatever you want to call us, we learn to have, or I would say like the people that 
you know thrive off of the job definitely have and enjoy the job definitely have because the industry changes like there's new rules every six months and like the algorithms change and if you want to like keep up without having like a complete breakdown or getting really really angry at the world you need to learn to just like be quite relaxed with being adaptable and i'm very very grateful for that we call it a quality or a skill i'm not sure whatever it is i'm very grateful to be quite comfortable with it during this time because i think it has helped me remain quite relaxed in the face of uncertainty i still feel quite like relaxed and i'm just going to take everything as it comes it was stressful to begin with because obviously people couldn't go to work you will notice there's an absence of lauren right now she has been working from home i made the decision not to furlough her and that was a really tricky decision because obviously lots of people had lots of different opinions over whether i should be furloughing which is my call to make and i had to be comfortable with whatever i chose and i made the decision not to because i wanted to keep putting content up for you guys and i knew that i would be able to do that more regularly if it wasn't just me editing i think we would be maybe on half the content if not maybe less if i hadn't had that support especially with moving you might not have seen me for like a month because i really needed you know that support with the work side of things and obviously that things haven't been as busy as they would have been like there were lots of trips booked in and there were lots of jobs and they unfortunately can go ahead due to social distancing i'm really sorry i keep holding this mirror up i really need someone to like stand behind the camera and just be like mirror i feel really jealous of all of the us youtubers that usually have someone like in the room with them when they're doing makeup tutorials but yeah so with the lack of jobs and the talk of a recession next year when it was three weeks i was like do i just take a three-week holiday and you know just kick back which obviously it's been like three months so very glad i didn't do that because that would have been a complete waste of time but obviously when people are talking about stuff like that it's like oh do i like rein everything in or do i try to you know be as sensible as i can but carry on with my content and obviously like not furlough and i feel very comfortable with that decision i'm really happy that i made that decision and i think if nothing else it's been a really great thing for me to keep focused with it's helped to keep my mind off of lots of things that definitely would have made me so anxious had i just not been working and from a lot of the feedback i know that you guys have really enjoyed having really really consistent videos and honestly me and Aaron are just so happy to be being able to be this consistent with youtube as well like we're really enjoying putting up more videos it definitely feels so productive and that's so nice i'm just putting a bit of this dior color and contour eyeshadow stick in my inner corners because i love this it's so cute and now i need to find a tiny brush to blend it out with and i'm not sure i have one i'm gonna use this fenty beauty concealer brush i didn't use this for my concealer but i actually what today is oh the beauty blender I'm trying to get back into beauty blenders at the moment but i really love this brush for concealer but yeah that is how corona has affected work so far and we're just gonna have to take it as it comes really i'm gonna be using max stone lip liner and this is basically if you want to make your lips look bigger without actually having lips that are particularly big this is what i do go over everything really really lightly and smudge it all out i don't know if you can see the difference between this side and this side some people might hate this some people might not i go over everything really lightly smudge it all out and that's just going to be my base and then i'm going to go in with more lip liner the next question is what are you doing to grow up your hair i feel like i'm always trying to grow my hair like i like long hair so this is iconic new by charlotte tilbury by the way so there's not anything new that i'm doing in particular however i always try and eat as much protein as i possibly can so for me that mostly comes in the form of eggs occasionally fish if i am in the mood for fish i use a lot of oils and hair masks not a lot like not an excessive amount but when i can i will hair mask them as much as possible i'm trying not to use as much heat <laughs> which you can probably tell by how my hair looks right now i've been having it curly more often like sometimes just having my natural waves but then using my crimper to kind of like do certain bits that you can see yeah, i haven't blow dried it in ages i heat style maybe like twice a week at the very most i'm gonna heat style today maybe for my hairstyle i'm not sure i've been using silk scrunchies for like the longest time to try and help someone also asked me if i am going to keep my hair the same or if i'm going to change it at any point so i thought this would kind of work talking about this off the back of 
what I'm doing to try and grow it but obviously I'm trying to grow it because I have a lot of breakage up the top I've actually noticed a lot of youtubers suffering with that lately I don't know if it's because I have it so therefore I'm just noticing it by the way yes I'm aware I've used three lip liners so far this is KKW Beauty I love their lip liners I actually have more of their lip liners coming in the shade nude 0.5 their lip liners are so great I wish there was something like that in the UK Obs the shipping is a lot and the taxes are a lot but I'll pay it because I really like their lip liners I actually think they're great I'm just going back in with my Fenty cream bronzer by the way just I'll be here I'll be here a while anyway with regard to my hair there's a lot of breakage literally up here like all of this looks fine and like super healthy and it's like the top layer which takes the most brunt from heat styling but that was also bleached so it's that like toxic combo of bleach and heat styling on my hair that's really like done me in but yeah my plan now i think i have some hair inspo so i'll share it here i'm not really like too precious so i'm thinking of well i'm definitely growing out my natural hair so like this color i don't think i'm gonna bleach it again for a while the most i might do is just have a couple more highlights once it's stronger and once i'm able to like cut it all to one length and cut out because basically this is super healthy even though it's got bleach on it but my top layers are very broken and dry so i need to cut those out first and i want it to be all one length so basically what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wait for it to grow just like a tiny bit more and then i'm gonna lob it and allow my natural brown to grow out and then i will just carry on growing and i'll probably add like some gentle highlights like i really like kylie jenner's hair when she has this kind of root and then it's like a caramelly color more towards the ends but it's still very browny i just want to keep with my natural color i don't know if i'm going to get grays at any point but whilst i don't have grays i'm going to take advantage of not having them and not having that like maintenance of like i don't know if i'll choose to dye my hair i don't really know i would say probably because i enjoy like hair and an excuse to mess around with it but yeah whilst i don't have that i feel like it's the prime opportunity to just like grow out my natural color and i think that's a really good kind of color and even putting blonde on my hair to achieve that look wouldn't be as harsh as when i was like blonde blonde if you know what i mean so it will be able to take it but yeah i think i will have extensions put back in just for convenience more than anything and it really does they do help if you are going to put heat on your hair it actually helps to protect your natural hair because your natural hair is sandwiched in between hair that's not yours so when you're heat styling it actually does help to protect the bulk of your hair and as long as you look after like the tapes well and you don't let them like pull at your hair because sometimes if they like slide you can then end up with them tugging on your hair as long as you don't get to the point where it's doing that actually they're really like good on your hair and they shouldn't thin it too much so that is my long hair chat for you guys there are so many more questions that have come through since i last looked at this is actually like it's crazy someone's actually asked where my phone case is from this is from coco blossom and then this is from etsy i'll link them both in the info box if you want them oh someone asked about the music that we use in the videos and i wanted to talk about this because i've seen quite a few comments on it recently lots of you ask about it because you're like i just want to know what the song is a lot of the songs that i use are royalty free and they cost like 50 dollars a pop so that's why i don't really tell you guys what they are because I don't think anyone should be spending $50 for one song. Basically, also at the same time, I have a few songs that Ryan has made for me, which is so kind of him. He did a couple of Christmas ones as well. And I love that. And it's really nice being able to have my own music and basically have the rights to it and no one else has it no one else can claim copyright on it because what happens a lot of the times even if you use royalty free like a couple of years down the line things might change and that person that originally made it might take it off the royalty free website and then they end up just like claiming adsense on your videos it's not the end of the world because by that point we're so far down the line that those videos aren't really making so much money anymore but it's annoying if it is a video that takes off and does earn some money so basically at the moment i am in the process of having all of my own music made but it's obviously a long slow process so yeah that is that there was a few people have dm me on instagram and i've gone back and said like the songs are 50 dollars a pop and people are like wait what someone's asked are you buying a dining table or planning to keep that space clear in your kitchen people are obsessed even like my family everyone wants to know what i'm gonna do with that space and i don't know if it's because other people are also like oh what would you do with that space like i think the majority of us go the thought of a dining table by the way, I'm using this NARS oil infused lip tint. It's in like a goldy color. I thought it was very appropriate for this video. I think the majority of us go to thinking that a dining table should be there. At the moment, I am in no rush. I obviously have the island, which is where Ryan and I eat at. We have bar stools there. And because it's just both of us at the moment, I'm not itching to put a dining table there because no one's coming in my house. I'm more invested in getting the garden 
done up because if I have to have a socially distant birthday, we could get put into lockdown again. Like I don't really know, but if I have to have a socially distant birthday and I'm allowed people into my garden, in October because we could spike again. Then I want my garden to be nice. So that's kind of why I'm pouring more of my time and effort in there. I'm not having my garden done until August. And loads of people would be like, oh, summer's basically over, why are you bothering? But because my birthday is October, I just feel like it's a really safe idea to go for. So yeah, I think a dining table will probably go there, but there's no one coming around for dinner at the moment. So it's just not gonna be something that I need to fill immediately as with the rest of the house. Like I'm obviously just doing the whole house very very slowly which i feel is quite normal i think we have this culture just like i don't know if it's in the uk or just like in general of like rushing to get houses done and i just don't think it's like necessary it's quite a nice journey for me to do things slowly i should probably i'll talk you through my budget ish like how i'm planning for budgeting in a vlog because i feel like that might be interesting for some of you but i want to kind of live in the house and decide how i want to furnish it over a little bit of time versus like rushing because i don't like making mistakes and i just feel like i've rushed to like furnish places in the past it's just not a good idea it's just not a good idea so um i am definitely playing like a much safer longer game i would say with a lot of the stuff going on in this house a bit personal how we feel when ryan goes back to his house ryan is actually between um you don't really see because i i don't i don't vlog like 24 7. at the moment there's still bits being done to be honest i think people feel like there's going to be some like huge change but to be honest it's not going to be that different i think if anything it's just really nice for us to have our own spaces to work in because i think it's really difficult when you both work from home but yeah if i'm honest i just don't really feel like it's gonna change anything that much which i guess is a good thing it's just nice to not kind of be on top of each other like working on top of each other or like i think spending 24 7 with your partner isn't particularly healthy and i think a lot of us has definitely realized that through lockdown so yeah i think if anything it's gonna be really nice i really can't decide what to do with my hair today like what are these bits travel plans for the year nothing i am not going well i say that i say that like, i really hate saying like no i'm not gonna do this and then i end up like doing it i just think like you can never really say never but i don't really have plans to travel right now i would say are you planning on doing a black owned fashion haul i've actually shown some bits from andrea yama in a previous video so i will link those below i'm waiting for some other bits that i bought from a brand called fe noel i think that's how you say it i'm waiting for those to arrive i feel like they because of corona have like taken a while to ship things which is like completely understandable there's been so many brands that have been in the same boat so i will obviously show those when they arrive top baby names you love but would never use Oh, I feel like Ryan's vetoed quite a few of mine and Lauren has vetoed many of mine. One that I love, a name that I love and has been vetoed, I think just because it doesn't go with last names, is Winnie. I love the name Winnie. It's so cute. I can't remember who vetoed that one, if I'm honest. I was about to clamp these, but I don't know if I need to do my front bits. I might not. Well, I just put heat protectant on my hair unnecessarily. Anyway, I'm just going to leave my hair there like this today i think it's kind of cute i'm gonna wear my glasses as well i think today so they'll look quite cute what other names did i love oh, oh i liked ace for a boy and lauren was like no <laughs> i would be the kind of person that would name my child like no actually i wouldn't name my child apple i'm not even going to compare myself to that level but i like kind of less common baby names but rest assured my baby's names are already picked out brand color of your white paint it is literally like dulux brilliant white gloss finish not matte basically and i picked that purely because i think it's a little bit better in terms of like maintenance and moving into the house like you just know something's gonna get bashed into a wall and it marks so badly if it's matte what is your favorite bronzer for summer well my friend i've just used about six i would say the fenty beauty cream in teddy i've just been so like after a cream bronzer my bare minerals foundation <laughs> stick looks like this like that is it like wound up that is it. I love this, um, but I actually felt like it just wasn't blending as well. I think the product is quite old now. Like I've been using that, literally that stick for over a year. So I think it was kind of coming to the end of its life as well as obviously like being right at the end of the contour stick. So I was like, do you know what? I need to like find a new cream bronzer. And then I was looking at some Fenty stuff because I wanted to try a few bits. I think this was what I went on to Harvey Nicks for and ended up spending an absolute fortune on. I don't get press discount with Harvey Nicks. I don't get, I don't get anything. I really, really rate Fenty products i think they are just the best they are up there as like my top three makeup brands oh that's strong if we're going to do my top i say kkw beauty in third charlotte tilbury second fenty 
first. The only thing I struggle with with Fenty is like the matching myself to the shades because there are so many, but that is not a problem. I've been loving this combo lately. It's just incred. Oh, there's also this, which I am going to use. So yeah, I feel like those are my three kind of like go-tos that I just really love. And they also make me feel really special as well when I wear them. How did I get onto this? What was my question? Favorite bronzer for summer. So yeah, the Fenty Beauty Cream. But then I also picked up a Private Island and Coco Naughty in the powder brushes. Private Island is gorgeous as like a lighter bronze. And I just kind of wanted something that was a bit like Max Give Me Some, which I still love and use very, very regularly. Someone said it's like quite congesting. I haven't found that if I'm honest, but to be honest, by the time I put this on my skin, I've got a million layers of makeup on. So there's probably something else doing way more bad stuff to my skin before that powder even gets anywhere near if that makes sense future business plan that's very interesting i have a lot of things in my online space that i want to do which i'm obviously not going to talk about because either if i change my mind which could happen <laughs> that's definitely happened before it also just might not be the right time for like years i don't know but i definitely there's something that i'm kind of building the bare bones of at the moment and more researching more than anything because i think if i'm going to do something i want to be really prepared and really knowledgeable in what i am doing in that sense but there's also things that i would like to do offline that I would really like the time off of the online world to go and study and that's difficult because the online world is just so go 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 and my job here is so go 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 so I would basically need to almost take maybe a year off and I don't really know if I want to do that yet but I have like a future offline business plan that I would just love to do and if like the internet disappeared tomorrow or just like it stopped making me money it would be something that I would just be like okay I'm just gonna take a year and learn this and do that and I could happily like carry on for the rest of my life. It's really hard with business. I think anyone that runs a business will know you don't wanna like talk about your next move until it's like definitely happening. So at the moment, I'm just having a kind of time in my life where I'm really stepping back, reflecting and moving very slowly but surely on everything and I'm not really in a rush. I think I've rushed projects so much in the past and I've learned so much over the past couple of years. If I decide to add a new arm to my business, I want it to feel right. I don't want it to feel rushed. I want it to completely make sense and to be really happy and confident in the decisions that I make. I think that's when you know that you've got a really great thing. Yeah, I feel that's like always such a vague answer and I love transparency and I would love to just tell you exactly what I wanna do. I could tell you about my future thing that is maybe not gonna happen. I don't know. I would love to do hair and I do people's hair now but in a more styling sense and i just i love doing like my friend's hair for nights out and it's something that i am slowly learning more how to do i would love to actually go and study hair styling and learn how to cut and color and just do the whole shebang i would love that i've been doing <laughs> since i was really really little i'm always that person that was getting told off for braiding other people's hair so yeah it's something that i love so much i love doing it but to actually take time off to go and study it would be like it, it's a lot it is a lot i just don't feel like it's the right time right now like i just feel like i have so much more to give here if we talk about my offline plans here and my online plans here i feel like i still have so much more to give right here and i'm not ready to take a year off yet someone said sorry i'm from hu i don't know what hu is i don't know if i'm being really really stupid and saw someone ask you why you bought a bungalow what is that so um my house is a bungalow it is it basically i think in the uk just means all on one level i believe i obviously call it a house because i think it would be weird to constantly be like my bungalow <laughs> but yeah it basically just is a house that's all on one level you can actually like change them into houses if you want to lots of people have asked why i picked it i wasn't like set on i had to have this i wasn't set on i had to have a house i was quite open to my options i just wanted what felt right for me i mean a mansion out in the countryside feels very right for me but budget you know but yeah there are a lot of them i would say in kind of like especially like the area that i grew up in in the south of england i think there are quite a lot of bungalows so they're quite common to me i don't feel like they're a real like weird one and i feel like in the us a lot of you guys have houses that are more on one level i don't know i would love to know because i feel like everyone has different like experiences of what is available to them property wise in their local areas i liked this property because it didn't it wasn't unmanageable in terms of the size i really didn't want a giant ass house but i knew i wanted to be on the property ladder so for me this house is perfect it's not unmanageable in terms of the size the garden's not too big so it's not unmanageable in terms of gardening because my god gardening could go on forever 
forever and ever and ever. And there's definitely areas that I can add value to, which I think is great about a bungalow. I could have bought a house that had gone up into the roof as far as you could go and, you know, had a nice garden, but then there's not a lot for me to really do. So yeah, this one just really felt right in terms of like my options. Wow, since you're getting older, definitely not old though, our children on the cards. I'm gonna say this, I don't feel like children are an age thing. Children are, you are emotionally and mentally and physically ready to care for another life. I think we put a lot of emphasis on it being an age thing. And actually like there are some people that I think are fantastic parents at a younger age. A couple of my best friends had a baby girl, I think when they were about 20, 25 and they are the best parents and honestly they take their parenting so seriously like their kid is the smartest like she's so advanced in everything i mean i think it helps that one of them's a teacher i don't think that age equates to it being right to have children so children are not in the cards right now i also feel like as soon as i'm like not single the uh children card always comes up and i'm just like ah we're we're back someone has asked what qualifications did you have and how did you get into your old job i will link a very old video about my it's basically it's titled not going to university but i actually give like the backstory of all of my job history and basically everything about that is in that video so i know it was like 20 14 when I filmed that and I'm like the most nervous little thing in the whole world so if you want a complete juxtaposition to how I am now go and watch that video why did you move to a house the same size as your flat so it's actually not it's definitely not the same size as my flat this is a three bedroom bungalow house property whatever you want to call it it is far bigger my bedroom here is twice the size of my old bedroom and the kitchen random area and living room are like so much bigger than my kitchen living room like mix that i had in the flat and then i had one bedroom and one bathroom i did have a utility room which i do rate that's like almost equates to like half of one of the other bedrooms but that utility room was very small i think because i haven't shown both of the other bedrooms it doesn't seem that big because i literally spend and this is the thing this is why i didn't want a huge house because i literally spend my time in my bedroom kitchen bathroom living room whenever i've had bigger places to live in i have noticed that those are the places that i spend my time and if there are other rooms i tend to not use them so much however with buying a property i did want somewhere that i could grow into so it didn't make sense to me i did look at lots of two bedroom properties because i was like i don't need all this space this is so unnecessary so basically i didn't go for a huge property because i that's unnecessary but i also felt like a two bedroom was actually like it didn't give me space to grow into over time and my one thing is even though i see this as a stepping stone property you never know what happens i might decide to stay here for 10 years so actually i thought it was sensible to have more bedrooms than i need right now but my old flat was rented so really i just wanted to be on the property ladder but i didn't want to buy a flat that i then felt like i was going to grow out of very quickly because especially if we have a recession that we go into at any point it just made sense to be able to ride it out okay i need to wrap this up because i need to go in food shop what are your plans for the garden i have done a vlog that has my garden plans in it so i will link that below i've also kind of done a really really crap hand-drawn diagram on my hello october at home instagram so you can go and have a look at that if you want how do you learn how to save i want to buy everything i see i feel like lockdown has taught us a lot about saving in terms of what things are necessities and what things are not for example like i in order to save more money each month kind of over time once lockdown is eased i probably will not be running back to my nail place because I can now do my nails on my own anyway and I'm actually quite enjoying having them bare at the moment I think especially when you're like gardening and stuff it is much more practical so it just feels right for me for now I also will probably have periods of time where I don't have extensions in I'm obviously very excited to have tapes put back in for a little bit because I actually had hair that I had that's like fresh hair that I was meant to have put back in in April and I'm really excited about that so I will be having that put back in but I think I'll do more periods of time where I let my hair breathe and then I don't have to have as many hair appointments so it's less expensive i like to basically when saving look at things that like don't need to be done as often as possible things that aren't essential really and kind of scale back in that way i think in terms of like buying everything you see you just have to be very very strict with yourself basically if i'm not looking to spend money on clothes i don't look at clothes so i'll watch more like people's vlogs but less of like fashion content and i would kind of tailor what i see if that makes sense but yeah in terms of saving money i when i was especially when i was younger now i get paid in like as a self-employed person you get paid in lumps and sometimes you could go for like six months without seeing a penny and then sometimes you'll have like lumps come in i always make sure that i don't spend 
the whole lumps and the whole lumps the whole lump of money and i always keep money back but in terms of like when i was on a low salary i would do extra jobs like in terms of babysitting and things like that so that there was just like extra money coming in that i could just kind of sweep away and not really think about if you are looking to save and you're looking for like really really solid advice i feel like i don't talk about it as eloquently as patricia and she has a platform now called the break platform and it's a youtube channel but she also has an instagram that goes with it it is the best platform it is the platform that we all needed on youtube and i back it I, I always talk about it i love that channel so much it's a joy to watch patricia talk about money that is that is my favorite thing in the world is she's so funny and she just talks to you in a way that makes so much sense but it's also really inspiring and i just find it a really empowering channel to watch so if any of the, there's quite a few questions about money to be honest but i would highly highly recommend patricia's channel or the break platform channel because it is everything you need or didn't know you needed are you still keeping up with your hobbies during lockdown i don't know if i had any hobbies before lockdown work is definitely been my hobby for years i think gardening has become a hobby since lockdown that lemon tree i'm obsessed with it it lost lemons and i was like i actually like cried yeah i didn't really have any hobbies apart from like working and going to the gym does working count as a hobby probably not so yeah i actually think lockdown's been good it's given me time for more hobbies i've actually been reading a lot as well which has been great lots of questions on tattoos or piercings post lockdown tattooists are still one of the businesses by the way i'm going to cover this spot like i said i would tattoos are one of the businesses that are still not able to open at the moment which is silly because nothing is ever reused in a tattoo studio i know people are obviously getting very close but hairdressers are allowed to open back up so i don't know it's just a very weird situation really isn't that yeah i'm actually still waiting for inspiration to strike me i do this sometimes where i go for like a period of years without <laughs> literally I've, done, I've gone years before without having a new tattoo and then suddenly i'll get like 26 it all just depends on how i'm feeling and how inspired i'm feeling i actually did find some designs lately that i thought were cute but i'm gonna sit on it for a little bit i like to sit on tattoo designs for a little while there's a couple of questions on how do you stay motivated one there's one that says how do you stay motivated to do youtube and one that says how do you stay motivated to work out you know how if you love eating cookies you don't need motivation to eat cookies i love youtube it is the platform it's why i haven't ever even like you know youtube has passed its boom and it's now like just very kind of like it's plateaued and it's consistent and i really actually really like that it's something that i love and continue to do even past its boom i'm not here for you know that so i love doing it and i don't need like motivation to do it so much i love sharing content with you guys and in terms of like motivation for the gym i love going to the gym and i love exercising or like i like exercising because i'm not really going to the gym right now but i really enjoy exercising so i don't need motivation to do it i actually talked about this in my last video the one that was like my workouts and talking about my weight loss so i will link that below i think i might have said that in this video already i've been filming for a long time this is going to be like a long Vid. you're gonna need to like make yourself a cup of tea but i talk about finding a type of exercise that you love and i think that that is so important in keeping you motivated because if you like it you don't really need to be motivated to do it you might just like fancy it and i think that's great so yeah motivation wise i don't find myself needing to motivate myself to do things because i enjoy them but if there is something that i actually need to do and i cba I'm just very strict with myself. I like treat myself like I'm my own child where I'm like, you really need to do this today. We are better than this. So go and do insert thing you don't want to do here. What do you hate to clean? Ovens. Once everything is back to normal, what restaurant will you be running back to? 100% Polpo. Oh, current favorite song. Well, I'm still listening to Stuck With You on repeat because I am a basic human being like that. So yeah, that's been blessing Ryan's ears, I think for about a month straight now. But I am also loving his new track, which is a little bop and I will link to it in the info box below. Would you like to buy more properties to rent out? Potentially, I think this could be one that if I decided to, if I was in a position to, I would probably rent out. I think it's a really good one for a lot of aspects of it to become a rental. So that's definitely a potential. It's also definitely something I would love to do if I were in that position. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? 100% Ibiza. Ryan and I actually talk about that all the time. Okay, I actually think I've made it through so many of these questions. I am going to put on some setting spray. This is Baby What It Do from Fenty. Mm, smells so good and gives such a nice glow to my skin. I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little kind of get ready with me chat. <laughs> Just me telling you my life story and talking about the house intermittently over and over and over again. Do let me know if you'd like me to do more of these in the comments below. Also, if you have any other questions, pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to them. And yeah, I hope you're having a lovely day. 
and I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.